Uh, welcome to Higher Structures Seminar Series of Feza Gürsey Center for Physics and Mathematics. Uh, today our speaker is Kadri İlker Berktal from Bilkent University and he will talk on his uh, recent research on shifted contact structures on derived stacks and we take uh, we thank İlker once again he is one of the regular speakers in our seminar series thank you İlker yeah, yes please yeah I, I thank you it's always a pleasure uh, I mean thank you for having me here and for for your kind uh, introduction um, so as you say and, and as, you, as you see so in this talk uh, we will I mean I will be talking about uh, the, the structures the so-called shifted contact structures and actually we will study for the drive symplectic structures so these are more I mean in the same context essentially so we will discuss geometric structures in the context of drive algebraic geometry essentially um, but of course, we, we need some terminology. So I will start with some terminology, and then I will discuss uh, so some terminology, uh, drive symplectic geometry, and then I will discuss uh, our, our uh, research on that topic. Uh, okay, first of all, let me start with some notation. So we we we will of course basically interested in drive stacks. So let X be a drive stack. Okay, so by which we mean, I mean, if uh, if you're not that much familiar with these things, so these are essentially some kind of functor. So for us, X is a functor from uh, the category of uh, competitive differential graded uh, K algebras, this is the category, to the infinite groupoids, okay? So I, I usually use category, but I mean infinite category, okay? So this is uh, a kind of an assignment with assigns to a, CDGA, A, uh, a competitive differential grid K algebra to a simply shield set, actually, XA. And we uh, define this XA by using, uh, you know, the Yoneda. So just a second, Yoneda embedding. This is like spec A and X. Okay, so this is Yoneda. Essentially, but what does it mean? This XA is actually a collection of A points, okay? So it basically tells you that for A point P, so if you have an A point in your stack, it essentially means you have a morphism, okay? P from spec A to X itself, okay? And here spec A, I mean, it looks maybe uh, more or less the same spec from the classical algebraic geometry, I skip how we define spec, but it's actually a kind of a, there is an adjunction, you know, from uh, the global algebra of function uh, to CDGA op, CDGA op, and this uh, spec is the right adjunction, okay? Right adjunction factor. And uh, when you have just spec A, your space is spec A, this is called affine drives, as in this classical case. But uh, of course, we need to be careful. This that there is no constraint, there is no condition on that morphism. Uh, therefore, we need to be a little bit careful when this P is uh, an open uh, embedding, is open embedding. What does it mean? It basically tells you that your X in that case, the drive stack, is called a drive scheme. Okay. It means that around any point, you have a affine neighborhood, okay? Therefore, drive scheme is uh, your X together with the collection, I mean, a cover, okay? But a fine cover, essentially, okay? Therefore, if this uh, map is an open embedding or etal, if you, if you want more uh, technical term, we just call it a drive scheme, okay? As I said, this is a very natural object, just in the classical case, for any point P, you have a fine neighborhood. This is what basically tells us, okay? But for a arbitrary drive stack, you may not have an arbitrary, you know, for any point, you may not have an fine neighborhood, okay? Therefore, there is a local model for drive schemes. Therefore, this is the best 
the best higher space for us, okay? And of course, what is the next uh, best case? This P, I mean, point and the morphism I use interchangeably, I mean the morphism P, uh, is made smooth, smooth of uh, relative dimension N. So therefore, it's not an embedding, but at least it's cotangent complex has rank N. In that case, we say smooth of relative dimension N. So this one, uh, this P has uh, rank N. Okay. Um, in that case, if this is the case, we then call this kind of uh, object, drive stack, the drive art stack. Okay. Drive art stack. And if you if you look at carefully, when n equals zero, uh, you are in the et al case, which means that about local diffeomorphisms morphisms in the classical case. Therefore, you can recover the previous setup. I mean the drive scheme case. So therefore, drive schemes are a particular drive art in stacks for which p has a relative dimension zero. Okay, so you can consider like this. So these are uh, basic uh, spaces. And what else we have? Uh, another important thing for drive schemes, there exist good covers. Okay. Good covers for uh, this uh, drive schemes. Okay. So for that good cover, I mean this A is special. A is a special choice. So this A is kind of a special CDGA, which is called a standard form CDGA, okay? So this is the good cover. For good covers, I mean, I just, some not a general terminology, but just say good covers. Uh, this is a standard form covered by a standard form affine drive schemes, okay? Standard form means A itself is a kind of a graded polynomial, okay? So this is a freely generated over some uh, K algebra. This is just K algebra uh, with some negatively graded generators. Okay, there are some generators like that. Minus one, for instance. And then it goes like this. Finite to many. Uh, M, N, minus N. Okay, this is called the standard form CDGA. So what does it tell us? This is actually a theorem, by the way, a theorem. What does it tell us? For any x around p, you always have a, a fine neighborhood. This is definition for drive scheme, so no problem. So you have some spec b, for instance, but you have no idea what is b. I mean, it could be uh, anything. But now you can refine this neighborhood like this and find spec a. And this a is more a tractable object, let's say. Okay. This is a very useful object. So therefore, you can really shrink your neighborhood and obtain a nice cover, let's say. Okay, this is the motivation. So I skip some details, but this is the idea. You can always find, for drive schemes, you can always find such a nice uh, refined neighborhood. Okay, you can always choose your local model, you know, given such CDGAs. Okay. Um, so what else? Uh, some geometry, you know, Pantev, Toen, Vekwe, and Vezuzi defines the following uh, spaces. And one of them uh, is a P, X, a K. Okay, this is basically the space, uh, the space of K shifted P forms. Okay, on X, and we have another space. This is actually a simplicial set, but uh, I skip these details. And the closed version. So I will explain these spaces. Uh, K shifted, closed P forms. Okay, and therefore, how we define these spaces, I mean, as I said, this is a little bit maybe tricky, but PTVV defines these spaces first of all for a fine case and then using mapping stack construction uh, they generalize for all drive stacks i mean there are some special assumptions but uh, it's not a big deal right now 
And uh, therefore, let's simplify. For instance, uh, let us consider only the case x equals spec a. Okay. And a uh, is standard form. Remember, standard form, special choice. Because this is a very useful case. We, we will see why. And then, for instance, the element of this space, AP, XK, is actually, I mean, uh, the, these are kind of elements from this complex. Okay. Uh, like this, such that these are D close. Okay. And of course, I forgot to remind something. If you have such a CDGA or any CDGA, you can define Deram algebra. Okay. Deram algebra is a double complex in this form. Okay. PEK. So you have a double complex uh, and you have some D total with this D total. Uh, and this is D plus D there. Okay. So therefore, with respect to this D, the internal differential, uh, you, this is the requirement. Okay. If you have such an element, this element is called K-shifted P4. Remember, in classical case, smooth, if you have a smooth manifold, uh, actually, the K is just zero, always zero. Uh, for smooth spaces, all shifted P forms are actually zero shifted P forms. And therefore, this condition automatic, okay? Because in classical case, there is no grading, but, but actually you have a grading, but all differentials are zero, blah, blah, blah. Uh, anyway, so this is the idea. And the, the other thing, uh, the closed forms, now, these are kind of a sequence like this, okay? Infinite sequence, the elements in this form, such that uh, the each component coming from this part of the uh, complex. So let me write it down, uh, something like this. This omega 1a is the module of Keller differentials, uh, as you know. So something like this. So elements are from this part of the double complex. I mean, if you are more curious, if you write down the double complex, uh, you will see that these elements are lies uh, on the diagonal elements. Um, anyway, such that uh, what we want, we require d total omega is zero, okay? d total closed. But if you split this equation according to the weights, uh, you will see that d omega zero is zero, the, the one condition, and the other one, uh, d, d, there are omega i plus d omega i plus one is zero for all i positive, okay? So this is kind of important. I mean, I actually, this basically tells you that this condition, that this one tells you that this omega zero is a honest p form of uh, degree k. Okay, a, a K shifted P4. But what about the other terms? Other terms are kind of a correction terms, okay? Homotopy correction terms, if you wish. Correction terms, because as you see, these are not directly the RAM close. This is up to some term. If you put I equals zero, therefore the rest part of the sequence is a kind of a homotopy uh, corrections, okay? So up to homotopy and up to adding some term, you will have uh, actual closed form. But this observation, uh, therefore, you have a natural map. It induces a natural map from P close. I mean, I just omit X and K, you, you understand, and P, right? It basically, uh, so for a sequence, it just project down to the zero component, right? So you have such a natural map. For any closed P form, you have an underlying P form. This is uh, what it is. This is how we uh, choose that underlying. This is what we mean. And therefore, another uh, definition, this uh, just consider the two form case. Uh, if this omega zero is a two form, 
x, k, k shifted. And we call this thing non-degenerate, non-degeneracy condition. If, uh, as you know, as in the classical case, there is an induced map by using contraction uh, between tangent complex and the cotangent complex, like this, is uh, not isomorphism, but in this setup, we require quasi-isomorphism, right? Uh, and then uh, if you have a close to form, you know, uh, if you have a close to form, you know what is come. Uh, this one is called symplectic, K shifted uh, symplectic. If the underlying two form, omega zero is non-degenerate in the sense of, you know, the previous definition, okay? Uh, therefore, you need a closed two form, which means you have a sequence satisfying uh, the total closed condition. And if it is underlying two form is non-degenerate, then we call it K shifted uh, symplectic. Okay, very similar to the classical setup. In the classical setup, you have, of course, tangent bundle and the cotangent bundle instead of these things. But since we now in a non-smooth setup, we don't have such objects, so we have uh, complexes, actually, these are perfect complexes, uh, which means they are uh, quasi-isomorphic to the uh, bounded complexes, okay? And they are dualizable. This is the reason this TA exists. In general, for a general drive stack, it may not exist, okay? Uh, but because of our nice assumptions, in general, people work with uh, Artin, drive Artin stacks, uh, for which such objects uh, always exist, okay? Therefore, there are many underlying assumptions, actually, hidden assumptions. So we need to be a little bit careful. Uh, and there are many others. I mean, still, let's keep remembering what PTVV defines. Uh, for instance, we can consider the following map. Okay. Here, uh, the source, uh, we have some target, and the target is, let's say, n symplectic. Okay, so that this is a drive stack, map of drive stacks, let's say, uh, map of d stacks. I mean, most of the time we consider drive art in stacks, by the way. So, uh, so most of the time there are nice uh, assumptions. Uh, anyways, uh, with this, morphism in hand, we can define the so-called isotropic structure. Isotropic uh, structure on F, by which we mean the following. We mean the existence of a path or homotopy, if you wish, from zero to F star omega. Okay, so when you pull back omega, uh, under this uh, morphism, uh, what we want, there must be some path between zero and uh, F star omega in the space of, you know, two forms, uh, close two forms, whatever. Um, this is the case, if you remember the classical syntactic geometry, but what we want, we want exact equality. I mean, F star omega must be equal to zero. If you have a, you know, syntactic manifold and you want to define Lagrangian, and this is what we are going to do, but we need to be a little bit careful. Uh, so if you have an isotropic structure, uh, then uh, there exists an induced map. I mean, let's say we have a H. H induces, I skip how we induce this map. Uh, this is a little bit, I mean, uh, it's not that much hard, but uh, we don't need the construction here. So somehow you have some kind of induced map like this, okay? The, the source is the relative tangent complex. Here, this is relative tangent complex of F, and this is the tangent, cotangent complex. Uh, therefore, we have, if you remember, there are nice uh, sequences, uh, distinguished triangles, if you, if you remember the theory, uh, somehow playing with these uh, exact triangles, you can obtain such a natural map. And as you may guess, Lagrangian structure 
on F, we mean uh, we have a isotropy. Uh, let's say isotropy uh, F omega plus what we want. We want this induced map to be uh, quasi-isomorphism or non-degenerate, let's say. Okay, which means that uh, the quasi-isomorphism. So if you have such a condition, it means that you have a Lagrangian structure. In, in the context of drive algebraic or let's say symplectic geometry, uh, we mostly define structures on morphisms. Okay, so remember in the classical setup, Lagrangian submanifold is a you know manifold with half dimension and blah blah blah. There are details when you pull back the form, it must vanish. Actually, this is the way of encoding this information algebraically. Okay, therefore, most of the time we discuss the structure. On a, on a morphism structure on F, on F, okay? But the classical setup actually, uh, by using, you know, smooth spaces, uh, natural inclusion instead of an arbitrary F, you can recover the classical definition, actually. Um, so, two important results, PTVV proofs, so, of course, there are very, very nice uh, results. Uh, one of them, uh, one of them is if you have a diagram like this. Um, okay, F omega, and let's say Y, G. Okay, let's assume these are Lagrangians, Lagrangian, that there are Lagrangian structure on F and G. Uh, sometimes we just say X is Lagrangian in F. F is some drive stack and this omega is, let's say, uh, N shifted symplectic. We have such a setup. And then if you look at the pullback, okay, if you look at the pullback, this one, I mean, we are talking about drive version, of course. This thing is the stack. We know this, no problem. But what is new is this has uh, actually a symplectic structure. This is n minus one symplectic. Okay, so it, this is very important. This is sometimes called the Lagrangian intersections theorem. Lagrangian intersection theorem. This actually resolves all possible bad intersection in the classical setups. Remember. So in the, in the classical theory, uh, if you have a two Lagrangian submanifolds, then when you intersect them, this is a problem, right? So you, you don't know uh, the resulting space, whether it has nice structure or not. But in this case, it's a dry version of the intersection theory. Uh, it tells you that this is really n minus one, which is symplectic. A nice example is, for instance, critical locus of a function. For instance, f is a regular, some regular function on a manifold M. Hey, just consider the classical setup. Even in the classical setup, this theorem tells us something new. And critical locus means uh, you need to look at the intersection of uh, the graph of DF, right? Inside the cotangent bundle with the zero section. Okay, this is exactly the definition of a critical locus of a function. Uh, you have a some section and you have an intersection problem actually, right? So you have a manifold here, and this is your uh, cotangent bundle, and this is your zero section because any manifold can be embedded like this. And the other section, DF defines a section maybe like this. Therefore, you have an intersection. This this is called this collection of those points is critical, uh, critical locus of F. And therefore, this critical F is actually fits into this pullback diagram. And this T star M is a smooth space. Therefore, it has, and we know that it has a classical a symplectic structure. In our definition, this is zero shifted symplectic. And the theorem tells you that the resulting space here minus one symplectic. Right, which cannot be visible by using classical techniques. Anyway, there are many other interesting results. Let me quickly mention 
uh, one more and then uh, start or two more start contact stuff uh, i mean why i'm just spending some time on these theorems because we are going to prove more or less the same kind of theorems in the case of contact structures uh, because in the classical case there are many nice relations we, we are going to I mean, uh, we want to establish similar relations in drive setup. So this is the reason I'm just spending some time on that book. So the other, other quickly, other theorem, let's say we have another uh, symplectic drive art in stack. Let's say this thing is symplectic structured on F, but N shifted. And plus another data is given uh, we have another drive stack, but which has some special property, which I'm not going to discuss in detail. This is called O compact, O oriented, uh, of dimension D. This is some notion, O orientation. Um, this essentially allows us to do integration theory on drive stacks, okay? So I'm just skip the details, but there is some special structure which generalize the usual integration, if you wish, to the case of you no know, drive stacks, if you wish. And yeah, I skip the details, but eventually, if you consider the mapping stack with source and target like this, this mapping stack turns out to be d n minus d symplectic. This is another interesting result. Uh, there are nice applications of, of this results in physics, AKSC construction, functorial field theory constructions. This is called a transgression sometimes. I mean, if you are familiar with these topics, this is another important existence results uh, coming from PTVV's work. Uh, let me mention uh, two, two important results, but now on local theory. Uh, drive uh, drive symplectic structures. Okay, what does it mean? Uh, we have uh, two important theorem. One of them is uh, by uh, Brav, Bussi, and Joyce. Okay, they actually show that you have a Darbo theorem uh, in drive setup. Okay. Basically, it says that there exists Darbo models for any given shifted symplectic uh, drive art instead. Actually. They first proved uh, prove this result for drive schemes and then extended to drive art instead. Okay. Therefore, if you remember the classical setup, it basically tells you that any symplectic manifold, you know, the symplectic structure, uh, you can find a very special coordinate chart, you know, in which omega is given in a very particular coordinates always. So therefore, there are no local invariants for symplectic geometry. The global data is important. Uh, the other theorem, uh, in the same same spirit. Um, so let me see my notes. Uh, okay, this is Joyce and Safrano. Joyce, Safrano. This is about Lagrangian neighborhood theorem. Okay, there exists uh, Lagrangian uh, neighborhood theorem for you know Lagrangians, uh, you know, in the in this form, Lagrangians in the context of drive symplectic geometry. Uh, but the theorem in the classical setup, classically. So the classically, it says, classically, uh, basically, what does it say? It says uh, a Lagrangian manifold uh, has a neighborhood, has a tribular neighborhood, uh, which is uh, symplectomorphic to the neighborhood of its uh, neighborhood of the zero section of its cotangent bundle. Okay, so let, let me write it down. A uh, Lagrangian uh, Submanifold, okay. L. Let me use the same kind of you know uh, notation like this. Has a neighborhood 
as a neighborhood, which is symplectomorphic, symplectomorphic to the zero section of its uh, cotangent bundle, T star L. Okay. So it's basically view as a tubular neighborhood of a zero section. Okay. This is Lagrangian neighborhood theorem. And uh, Joyce and Safrano extend this theorem to the drive setup. If you have a non-smooth object, drive stacks, and the Lagrangian structure in the sense of uh, the definition I described before, uh, you can have this kind of observation. And there are many other results, of course. This is not a complete list, uh, but this is the, these are very relevant to the, the, the next step section. So the next thing is the contact case. So what about the contact case? So these are our motivating examples, if you wish. But let me briefly remind you the uh, classical case, so what we have uh, classically. So classically, okay, first of all, the definition. So by contact structure, what we mean uh, by contact structure, so a contact structure on a manifold, of dimension 2n plus 1, right? This is a smooth uh, hyperplane distribution, right? Smooth uh, tangent uh, hyperplane uh, distribution. We generally use psi, you know, inside Tx, uh, but rank is 2n of rank 2n uh, such that there is some kind of non-degeneracy condition such that for any uh, smooth uh, locally defining one form, alpha, uh, what is it? Uh, the Deram alpha restricted to Xi uh, is non-degenerate. Okay. This is what we want, non-degeneracy condition. And uh, defining one form, uh, we mean here, locally defining one form, we essentially mean uh, kernel of alpha is xi, okay? Locally, not necessarily globally, but locally. And so what else, what we have classically, and we have a very similar theorem. We have a Darbo theorem, which means that uh, if you have a contact manifold, it has locally um, always, you know, chosen a very special coordinates. It can put in a very specific form. So there exists Darbo theorem for uh, contact uh, manifolds. Okay. Um, <clears throat> therefore, this locally defining one form can be chosen always in a very particular way. Therefore, as in the symplectic setup, uh, there is no locally interesting information. They always locally uh, look the same. Right? This is the motivation. <clears throat> uh, what else in classical setup? We have isotropic submanifolds. So we have M psi, like this. This is called isotropic. Uh, <coughs> isotropic uh, submanifolds. Uh, if, if actually this TPL is always inside our distribution, okay, for all P. And this condition you may uh, recognize this is uh, it means you have an integral submanifold, right? Integral submanifold. So it means essentially this L is integral submanifold. Uh, but if, if you analyze the possible dimension, uh, since this psi, remember the previous definition is rank 2n, right? 
Uh, and the, because of this non-degeneracy condition here, maybe I should <coughs> emphasize here, because of this condition, this xi together with this form is symplectic vector space. I mean, for each P. Okay? So therefore, uh, the, because of this analysis, this dimension could be at most the dimension psi divided by 2n. Okay? Therefore, you can discuss maximality uh, if you consider the maximal integral submanifold. This is called Legendre. Okay? So the maximal integral submanifold L, now this is called Legendre. Okay? So dimension L is chosen N, but of course the isotropic. And at the same time, the largest possible dimension, it, calls it is called Legendre. Okay, this is just a you know, contact version of the Lagrangian submanifold, right? But there are nice dictionary between simplex and contact geometry. So therefore we are going to use this di dictionary. <coughs> um, then, of course, uh, there exists also um, legendary neighborhood theorem in this setup. Legendary neighborhood theorem. But in that case, instead of the cotangent bundle, we use the so-called uh, jet bundle, one jet bundle. Uh, but this is just, uh, okay, let, me, let me write. So it basically tells you that, so for instance, you have a legendrian. Okay, this is Legendrium. And it, this theorem basically tells you that this L has a neighborhood, uh, contactomorphic, contactomorphic to a neighborhood of the zero section of its uh, one jet bundle, which is actually T star L times R. Okay, uh, basically, this is your one jet bundle. So, therefore, this is um, this part is kind of symplectic plus some other direction, one more dimension. It gives you a contact uh, manifold. Okay, um, so this is the classical story. Now, let us discuss uh, what we did. Okay, so we are going to as you see, we are going to establish similar connections, uh, you know, between symplectic and contact uh, geometries, but in the case of drive, drive setup. So therefore, we introduce uh, shifted contact uh, structures on drive stacks. Right? So how to introduce so definitions, and I will uh, mention several results. So the first definition, okay, first of all, we assume, as I said, there are always some hidden assumptions. This is uh, locally, uh, finitely presented uh, drive artin stack. So therefore, you remember the algebra A, spec A, it is always uh, finitely presented uh, CDGA. Okay, we choose like this. Um, the, uh, the other papers also uh, made the same assumption because it's a reasonable assumption because the drive stack is too general to work with. You need some reasonable assumptions. Okay, and uh, we have some integer. And then, first of all, a pre n shifted. Uh, contact uh, structure uh, on X uh, consists of okay consists of the following data. First of all, a monomorphism uh, monomorphism of perfect complexes. What kind of monomorphism? We have kappa between K and TX. Okay, 
So the part of the data is existence of this K, a perfect complex, and some monomorphism between K and TX. Okay, we want this. And I will also compare this definition with the classical definition. And you will see how we generalize the classical ge uh, definition algebraically. And the second thing is uh, a line bundle. We want a quasi-coherent sheaf. I mean the line, the line bundle, L, uh, such that uh, if you look at the cone, uh, of the, the morphism here, this is the line bundle shifted by n. And we, we denote this structure simply x curly k kappa and the l. This, this is our uh, pre-shifted contact structure. Okay, so before introducing the actual contact structure, uh, let us compare with the original definition. So in the original definition, if you go back here, uh -huh, here, this one. So as you see, we have some distribution psi. And because of the definition, actually this Tx, the tangent bundle, can be decomposed into psi, which is some kernel alpha locally, plus the other part, let's say R. Therefore, this is two n-dimensional part and this is one dimensional part. For any contact uh, manifold, the, the tangent complex uh, has a this uh, uh, form like this, locally, okay? Decomposition like this. Uh, and if you look at carefully, the, the idea is this R is actually the quotient of the Tx by psi, okay? Therefore, there is a one-dimensional remaining dimension one. Same here. Here, the cone, I, I mean, if you are not familiar with this language, cone is just homotopy, homotopy uh, co-kernel, okay? And the co-kernel means the quotient by the image, okay? Therefore, you are really quotienting out Tx by k, the image of k, and this gives you some one-dimensional object. So this kind of encodes algebraically, you know, the definition in the smooth case. So we need to use homotopy co-curve. Cone means homotopy co-curve. And we have perfect complexes. Good. And what about the other part of the definition? So let's continue. So we just call this thing, so this data, uh, the dot data called uh, n shifted contact. Okay, n shifted contact. If locally, locally on X, uh, and it means where L is trivial. Okay, we just trivialize the line bundle if you wish. And um, <clears throat> What we want, we want two conditions. We have the induced n shifted one form. So we have alpha. Uh, this we have this the induced one form, n shifted one form, such that this is our n shifted one form, the cocone of alpha, and we have some extra notation. I will explain why. The cocone of this alpha is equal to k, okay? And the same, so so let me explain quickly. This cocone is your homotopy kernel. Remember, in the original definition, you have a local one form whose kernel locally must be your distribution. So this cocone is your homotopy uh, kernel. So therefore, we use the homotopical version. Um, and we have one more uh, data such that, such that uh, the Deram alpha, which is, of course, a two form, uh, n shifted two form, is non-degenerate in the sense of before. Remember, I, I defined this before, non-degenerate, but on k. 
Therefore, ups, I mean, algebraically, we encode the original definition and extend it to a, a singular setup. And what is this alpha bar? Let me just, this, uh, actually some trick, tricky notation. It's not something interesting. Alpha bar means, actually, for any morphism, actually, you have an epimono uh, factorization in any infinite categorical uh, in an infinite category. So this is like uh, the epimono factorization. Okay, that X is epimono factorization. It means TX maps the image. Uh, and this is a, a epimorphism. And you have a monomorphism here, the target. Okay, and we just consider this part alpha bar. So it's actually as a map, it is the same map, but we only consider the image onto, I mean, the map onto its image part. And there are some reasons, I mean, why we choose that way or, or why we use monomorphisms here. Uh, let, let me just uh, make a remark why there are some weird uh, assumptions. The reason is, uh, remark, um, Locally, we really want to use strict kernel and strict co-kernel, okay? I mean, not just homotopy co-kernel, but the strict version. But the homotopy version and the strict versions are not equal in general. There are some maps between them, but they are not equal. But by using these choices, uh, they can they can they be equal, actually, okay? So the, the by our choices, of maps, I mean, definitions designed that way so that locally, which means when X equals spec A, for instance, okay, uh, <clears throat> kernel, the usual strict kernel and the usual strict kernel of complexes uh, can be used instead of instead of their homotopy versions, uh, co-cone and co uh, That was the purpose, okay? And for instance, one example, let, let me give you what is the issue. For instance, let's consider, uh, I don't know which, which map. Um, for instance, this cone map, okay? Uh, for instance, uh, we have K, and tx, right? And uh, so this is our cone. And this is actually a put, uh, push out diagram, okay? Uh, this is actually your push out diagram. And the strict co-kernel commutes this diagram. This is the strict one, commutes this diagram, of course, strictly. Therefore, but the, because of the universality, you always have this map, okay? But if you choose this map, monomorphism, which means that's a kind of a co-fibration in your model structure, this map turns out to be equivalent, okay? So this is the trick we use. So we use model structure, model categorical structure of uh, perfect complexes, actually. So therefore, there are such maps, but these are not necessarily invertible locally, I mean locally. Uh, <clears throat> so same for the other choice. So this choice gives you the vibrations in your uh, model structure, in your model category. Uh, and thanks to this, homotopy fibers corresponds to strict fibers, homotopy fibers corresponds to strict fibers. But as I said, this is not true in general. Not true in general. As long as you have nice morphisms like that, it is good. Okay. So some results. So let me mention some of them. Uh, some results. First thing, as you may guess, the local models. 
So you can really write down the particular one form uh, on a spec A, uh, and you can show it, uh, you know, it turns out to be a contact form in the sense of our definition. Okay, so that there is a, this exists, I mean. Uh, so therefore, there is a nice local model, prototype model, and you can show that actually any given contact structure is locally, you know, uh, equivalent to the, your prototype structure. Okay? So if you wish your standards, for instance, alpha turns out to be some expression like this, whatever it means. There are some uh, choices, of course. This is very similar to the standard case, okay? But these are your variables, your generators in your CDGA. So these guys, uh, this is actually when and odd. When n is an odd shift, you can write a form like this and you can show that this satisfies the conditions and this gives you a contact structure, n shifted contact structure on spec A. Uh, on Spec, but of course, there, there are many things to check. Uh, but this is the, the, the version, this is the expected. I mean, in the classical case, you have exactly the same form. I mean, not exactly, there are details, of course, but uh, looks like the classical case. And the second thing is the simplectification. Of course, in the classical setup, uh, for a given contact manifold, you can find this simplified space, okay? And therefore, um, in our case, this is also possible. So let me briefly explain. So you can find such a uh, drive stack, which is actually is a kind of, and there is a natural map like this, okay? Let's say X is uh, your... Uh, contact, and shifted contact drive stack, and you can define such an extra drive stack, SX, and this is defined somehow, very similar to the classical case, is a certain principle, let's say principle bundle, but here we use GM stack GM, bundle, GM bundle, uh, over X, okay? So it's a kind of a GM bundle, but how to define it? Let me let me uh, briefly. So there are some steps. The first step, since this thing is a drive stack, it is a functor like this, right? Remember, uh, this is a functor like this. For each a, it assigns uh, this set, basically. But how to define this set? This set is um, basically a drive. Uh, this is the drive stack of contact forms, okay, defined like this. So this S X A defined uh, like this. You have the data um, P alpha and nu, okay, and this alpha is your form, you know, uh, the contact form. Uh, I don't know what kind of shift we use, but okay, something like this. And P is from this A point. Remember, it's a kind of a map from spec A to X, a morphism like this. And finally, this new is the identification. So the cocoon of uh, alpha bar. Uh, so by definition, you need this identification. So we, we have a pullback, I mean, we, we restrict it to a point. So we are meaning because point is kind of a defined equivalently the morphism like this. So we are looking at pulling back over the na fine neighborhood. But this is the definition. And now you need to show that, uh, show, uh, this Sx is the total space, which is a stack. Once you show this, uh, the total space is a stack, drive stack. So you can see that this Sx has a drive stack structure. The total space of uh, GM 
bundle of L. So once you show this, uh, so there are there are many things you need to check, but eventually you will see that uh, this thing can be seen, can be identified as a total space of this bundle. Therefore, it has a structure of a drive stack. Okay. But this is not enough. This is just a drive stack. You need to show that it's a shifted symplectic drive stack. So therefore, you need to induce somehow I, of course, skip that part. Induce a n shifted uh, symplectic form on Sx. Okay. Actually, it's just a small teaser. I mean, if you are interested in, because of the construction, there are some natural maps like this. This is the cotangent stack. Okay, this is the cotangent stack. And because of the construction, there are such uh, projection maps. And there is a special level form on that cotangent stack. And we just pull it back and somehow define some form, symplectic form uh, on that thing. But of course, when you pull it back, there are some relations between alpha and the thing you pull back. Uh, there are details, okay? But the idea is uh, somehow um, the construction uh, comes with a natural structure, let's say. Okay, this is a very, uh, the, but there are many things to check, but uh, the steps are kind of natural. Actually, this is how we prove in the classical setup. So I'm just mimicking the classical setup. This is how you construct a uh, symplectified space on top of the contact manifold by just exactly doing the same thing. But you know, you have. Uh, smooth objects and blah, blah. Uh, maybe one more thing I should mention, then I don't have that much time. Uh, finally, of course, Legendrian. Legendrian structure. Uh, as in the symplectic case, somehow it, sh it should be some meaningful definition of a Legendrian structure, uh, right? Uh, I mean, Legendrian in contact uh, drive stack, right? And it is possible, by the way, and you should first introduce some isotropy condition and plus some non-degeneracy condition. Okay, and this is what we did. And we define some isotropy condition, uh, which basically, I mean, let, let me maybe the, the show you the... Um, Okay, well, let me see. Maybe I don't have that much time. Uh, anyway, may, maybe I should skip. So uh, the the the upshot is, let's say it is possible. Okay, so let's say it is that there is a meaningful definition uh, of the isotropic condition on F. You know, generalizing the classical uh, description. And also you can introduce a non-degeneracy condition actually by using, by using, remember the map, we already defined some map. Actually, we again use this map, but the isotropy const uh, construction requires some detail, but not that much. You can mimic uh, what has been already done in the classical setup, but using, I mean, what we are doing is using the correct dic dictionary between classical and the drive setup and introduce these objects naturally. And uh, maybe I'm going to stop here, but let me mention briefly, there are of course more to discuss. There are some work in progress. So as I said, our purpose is to achieve possible relation, uh, possible relations between drive symplectic and the drive contact structures as in the case of classical setup. So therefore we are, the classical setup is our motivation. There are many nice invariants, theorems, uh, relating contact and symplectic geometries. And we already have shifted symplectic structures. There, there are many nice results generalizing the classical framework. And we introduce contact parts and we try to establish uh, the connection between these two. And there are some problems uh, we proposed, uh, we'll see. So this is some kind of a work in progress. So I will stop here. So thank you very much. Uh, we thank you very much, Ilker.
Thank you. Thanks. So, uh, any questions or comments? Maybe I will ask one small question. It's a very naive question, but so the classical sure. setting mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. related to mechanics, right? Yeah, yeah. Symplectic setup uh, actually is a kind of a underlying geometry, geometry, uh, geometric theory. You know, uh, behind the classical mechanics, the contact oh. case is related uh -huh. to thermodynamics. Actually, so uh, how about can... the derived versions? Yeah, uh, derived the version. Are there such physical uh, theories be underlying this, like mm -hmm. derived mechanics and derived thermodynamics kind? Of <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's a very good question, but uh, somehow they use these algebraic tools. Uh, you know, to resolve some issues which cannot be resolved by using the classical approaches. So there are nice applications for these drive structures. There are drive Poisson structures, for instance. Mm -hmm. These are all, it's a kind of a program, you know, the quant quantization program. So they really wish to uh, express, you know, quantized theory by using some kind of a correct language. They try to use some reasonable framework. Uh, their motivation was to produce, you know, uh, or axiomatize or provide the correct framework for the qu quantization. So therefore, they use symplectic, then Poisson, and then there are many, many results. Drive deformation theory, for instance, or uh, there is this technique called geometric quantization. Uh, there is a drive version of it. So therefore, they are really hitting this problem uh, by using drive uh, you know, dictionary, drive tools. Um, this is our daily purpose. I mean, quantization and stuff. They also, as a site results, there are many nice construction regarding gauge theory uh, and stuff. Um, yeah, uh, this is the issue. The, the main thing is quantization <laughs> problem, I guess. Hot topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it seems it is indeed. Uh, and also, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the, the, also maybe one more thing, the functorial field theories, you know, generalizing oh. topological quantum field theories. I mean, oh, this I cobordism see. hypothesis, uh, geometric cobordism hypothesis, uh, there is this direction as well. I mean, there is extended functorial field theories, you know, generalizing TQFTs. Uh, so there are many drive stuff uh, in that direction as well. So this is, this, this is another direction. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any more questions or comments? So let's thank once more Ilker. Thank you. Thank you for uh, having me here. It's always oh, a pleasure. We thank you very much. <laughs> so two weeks later, we will meet again. Uh, so uh, hope to see you all uh, two weeks later. Yeah. Bye-bye. See you all later. Bye-bye. Okay, I'm closing. Yeah. Okay.